God bless you, and we're so happy to Thank have you, you with us. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we are grateful to Thee for the privilege of coming out again tonight to worship Thee. And we would ask that Your presence would bless us all. And may we tonight have the privilege of seeing You win souls to the kingdom of God. Bringing back those sheep that's gone astray. O oh, eternal and blessed God, speak to us through thy word like never before. And give us the desire of our heart to see the children born into the kingdom. Then heal the sick and the afflicted. Get glory out of the service as we commit ourselves unto thee. For we ask it in the name of thy holy and beloved child, Jesus. Amen. May be seated. I was so happy this afternoon to learn that a little help is on the road for me, that Brother Tommy Osborne, my good brother and friend, is to arrive here now with his picture, Black Gold, for Saturday night, I believe it is. And then he will also uh, help in Sunday afternoon, Brother Tommy will be preaching and praying for the sick. So I um, know you will enjoy this great servant of the Lord, Brother uh, Tommy Osborne. And now, tonight, if the Lord willing, I'm, I have two Bibles, and I don't want to preach both of them through, but I had one text or one scripture I wish to read in one, and then a text in the other. In the book of St. Luke's Gospel, the 17th chapter and beginning with the 26th verse, we read this. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They did eat, they did drink, they married wives, they were given in marriage. Until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the floods came and destroyed them all. Likewise also it was in the days of Lot. They did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom... It rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And now, by the way of a text, so I read that to have a context. In the blessed scriptures in Genesis, the 19th chapter and the 22nd verse, it reads this way, Escape thee hither, for I can do nothing till thou comes thither. Now I would like to take for a subject tonight, if the Lord would permit it that way, the called out. Last evening it was laid upon my heart to speak on the subject of the handwriting on the wall and the Lord did bless us and not only did he bless us but he furthered his kingdom by letting us read his word and to let the Holy Spirit reveal to us the things that's so close at hand and in doing so we type the great modern Babylon with the great modern America. And we found that in this nation of ours today, we found ourselves in the same kind of a fix that they were in when they had a handwriting on the wall. Then we also found out that we have a handwriting on the wall. 
And the same conditions, morally speaking, they were drinking wine with the ill-famed women in those days called concubines and today called, well, movie stars and so forth. They were in their class then, but now they're just scattered all everywhere. Sin is like a nag that's been broken in a saucer. And sin would be the yellow in the middle. I believe it's called the yoke. And when you go to picking in that yoke, it scatters all over the egg. And that's the way sin is. You just going to commercializing it and, uh, and fixing it up and making it look pretty and giving it another name, you scatter it through everywhere. That's what sin has did in this great, lovely nation of ours. It has been glamorized, or I mean glamorized. Sin has become glamour. Years ago, they used to have old Charlie Barleycorn, a horrible-looking creature with his hat pulled down over his ears and looked like some prehistoric animal. That was the Charlie Barleycorn of a few years ago. Today, he's all polished up. He's in what they call a bumper, and he's popular in a lot of so-called Christian ice boxes. That's right, but he's the same old evil demon. It used to be that sometimes grandma, for a toothache, should smoke an old cane pipe. But oh, how popular that devil has become. Daughter, mother, and the little children even smoke. And it's popular. But it's sin just the same. It's just hid under another name. It used to be wrong. For people to gamble, they had places like of ill fame where such things went on. Saloons where respectable people didn't attend. And women used to, when they would come down the street where there was a saloon, they'd pass on the other side. But today, she puts her foot on the bar. Let some little babysitter take care of her children. And she's become a barfly instead of a mother. She's more popular. Gambling, it used to be in the dens and dives of the low underworld. Has become that every time company comes, they get out the cards and go to playing. It's still sin. God will make you pay for your sin. He hates sin because he's a holy God. And a holy God cannot tolerate sin. If he could have stood sin, he would have stopped the whole thing when the first sin was committed. But sin requires death. And they that do such is dead already in sin and trespasses. I know that hurts. But that's what I mean it to do. Is to hurt. We've seen that through them great evils we see a sweep of the oncoming judgments for this country. For God cannot let us get by with sin. He could not be a righteous 
God and let us live the way we're living without making us pay for it. As I have said before, I say again, if the God of heaven lets us get by with what we're doing, he to be just would have to resurrect Sodom and Gomorrah and apologize to him. For destroying them, for we're just as bad as they were. Maybe worse. And now anyone who has the slightest bit of real spirit of God in them can feel the hot blast of the oncoming judgment. In your spirit, you can discern and know that there is something fixing to happen. The whole world is quivering. The little nations, the big nations, for in the hands of Bolsheviks, communists, ungodly, bloodless, heartless cults, lays the power to send this world to its ashes in one minute's time. Just the mercies of God being long-suffering is also a hole in it. We can become Russia's satellite before in the morning. And yet we don't notice it. We just go right on and they don't know what all this nervous condition is about. When the world has become a neurotic, even the psychiatrists themselves are having nervous breakdowns. The natural will never be able to interpret the supernatural. Neither could the magicians and the astrologers ever read the handwriting on the wall. It took the spirit Tell man to do so. Those astrologers could not read unknown tongues. They had not the gift of interpretation to know the supernatural. Therefore, they didn't know what it was all about. That's what the world is today. They dilly-dallied along in the things of rock and roll parties and big shindigs in their churches and cold formal sermons on the flowers and so forth and the gospel has been neglected and they know nothing about the supernatural you can speak to them on this altogether message that should be taught everywhere of the coming of the Lord and they laugh at it and it's the most needed message in the land. But the spiritual people, the born again, knows that something's fixing to happen and they're happy about it because it's the coming of the Lord Jesus the second time for His church. But the unsaved, they don't know what it's all about. It seems to be a supernatural move. I had the privilege just the last couple of years of having one of the greatest meetings the Lord ever let me have in Bombay, India. And just before getting there, I'd studied much of their nation, found out that the Medes of Persians that took Babylon from Beltasazer, their tribes settled up there and it's called the Hindus today. And then I was reading in their paper, and I have the clipping of it yet today, something that was startling. When I read something that seems to have a spiritual significance, I like to keep it. For God never moves unless it means something. And I was reading 
that where they said in their paper they just had a great earthquake that shook a great part of their country. You read that in your own American papers about two years ago. And it was said for about two or three days before this earthquake struck, a great strange thing took place that all the sheep and the cattle that used to hang around the walls in India, instead of having fences, they have walls. And their barns are made of stone, many of them. And where the cattle would stand around in the shade of the wall, all the cattle and the sheep took off to the middle of the field. And the little birds that had their nest up in the coves of the barns flew away out into the forest before the earthquake happened because the walls would fall on them. There was no one to drive them out. There was no literal sign to show that there was an earthquake coming. But being that God takes care of His own, they had a feeling they was impressed by the Holy Spirit to get out away from the trouble. And it seems to me that men who are made in the image of God feeling this great pressure coming on should go to safety. But they don't do it. They won't listen. Though the warning voice of God speaks day after day, night after night, but man desires to live in sin. You know, it's later than we think. People think they got plenty of time. But the scriptures declares it's later than we think. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Let us see what taken place in the days of the coming of the destruction and judgment in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot. They were both affiliated with the third destruction. Jesus said, just as it were in those days, so will it be when the Son of Man comes the, the second time. It'll be just like it was then. And we're taught that in the days of Noah, and not only at that time, but in the days of Lot, as junction times. And every time before judgment comes to the earth, God sends mercy call. Just before the days of the antediluvian destruction, God sent a prophet to the earth, Enoch. And he sent an angel. And he sent a message. And he did the supernatural. But what did man do? They eat. They drink. They planted. They build. They rejected the call of the message. Though the message that each of those men, both Lot and Noah, their message consisted of this. Grace, mercy, and deliverance. Grace, God's mercy to the people. 
was presented through grace and deliverance was presented to the people, but they turned it down. What did we find them doing? Laughing, scoffing, making fun, marrying wives, living in adultery, building, planning. Look at the building program today. And let me say something right here also. Look at the advancement in the scientific world. Now I say this not to scandalize. Neither do I say it to hurt feeling. I only say it because it's the truth. But those kind of works comes from the other side. The sons of Cain become great builders and great scientists to temper iron and metals and build. And the great scientific world was a very religious world, but come from Cain. But the lineage that come from Seth were poor, humble, peasant type who believe God. And when the prophet preached, they received it. When the supernatural was done, they received it. And when deliverance was offered, they received it. And the other side perished in the judgments of the Lord God. They thought because they were smart that they could just live with any woman they wished to because they were smart. They could drink and it was nobody's business. But God hates sin and He will not let it go unjudged. And the very thing that destroyed the unbeliever took the believer to safety. It was the waters of judgment that destroyed the unbeliever. And it was the same waters that packed Noah to safety. And it's the gospel message that will destroy the unbeliever that will take the church in the rapture before the judgment ever strikes. They will be safely carried through. Jesus said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And when this is done, then the end time shall be. When the gospel has reached the world, our blessed Savior said, then the end shall be. Now, He never said when you've passed tracts over the world, or when you sent Bibles over the world, or when you have sent missionaries over the world. But when this gospel has been preached, what is the gospel then? Paul said the gospel came to us not in word only, but through the power and the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit making the word manifest. For if you follow the very next verse, when he said, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world, to manifest himself the same yesterday, today, and forever. Most time, when we try to bring this message 
Our words seem to the world as like just lots did to his kinfolks. It seems to be that we were mocking to them. Are there idle words? Their pastors either bypass this great message of deliverance or try to explain it out into another generation to come. But the facts of it is that the angel of the Lord is present to confirm the word and manifest the power of the Holy Ghost. And these signs follow. They tried to mock and they said to Lot, or they just made fun of Lot, his own kindred. And Lot was a just man. The Bible said that their sins vexed his righteous soul daily. To see the perversion. And this nation is loaded with it. The misusing of the human body. When it's on the rampage, alcoholics, dope fiends, teenage juvenile delinquency, just like it was then. And men mock at it. And when they see the supernatural signs of the Lord God, they try to say that we're mocking religion. Someone said not long ago, wrote me a letter, some great doctor of divinity. And he said, Mr. Branham, get next to yourself. You're trying to impersonate the Lord Jesus. <laughs> said, you're only making a mock. How little this poor, decrepit man knew. That it's not a man can do that. It's the sign of the end time. And he's fulfilling it. But they mocked at Lot. Oh, don't listen to him. The man's crazy. How could this great place be destroyed? How could Sodom and Gomorrah the greatest city on the known earth. How could it be destroyed with fire and brimstone? They say today, how could the world be burnt over? How could the world be destroyed? My most beloved brother, the same word of God that spoken into existence says she'll go out of existence by the same way it was spoken by the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That is true. God be merciful to this poor, miserable, blind, wretched, naked nation. Did not the Bible say that you say I'm rich and increased in goods, I have need of nothing, and no, not that thou art miserable, wretched, blind, and naked, and don't know it. What a pitiful condition. I want you to notice something just for a moment that comes to my mind. Before destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, we find that God had a prophet up on top of the mountain by the name of Abraham. And he had given him a promise and he was willing to take the hard way and preach the real true word than to live in sin. And it was just before this great destruction taken place that the angel of the Lord met him. I want you to watch now. Noah's time, it was water. 
Sodom and Gomorrah, it was fire. And we're taught by God's most holy word that this time it'll be fire. And notice the scripture speaking. Sarah, around a hundred years old. Abraham, ninety and nine years old. Then Sarah would be eighty-nine. So many years ago it ceased to be with her as it is with women. But yet Abraham held on for he knew that God was able to keep his promise. He was faithful. He stayed by the word. The word that God had spoken to him. That's how angels appear to people. It's when you stay by the word. Not by man-made theology. But by the word. Thus saith the Lord. That's when the angels appear. Abraham stayed by the word. And while he was sitting under the oak one day. He saw three men coming up. And he was spiritual, for he knew that God was still God. And as these men began to appear, Abraham ran out to meet them and said, Sirs, stop in just a moment and let me fetch you just a little water to wash your feet and we'll make a little cake. And then you refresh yourself. Then you can be going. For this cause you have come. I wish I had time to go into those words. For this cause you have come. And so when the little meal was made ready. And Abraham stood watching these men eat. The angel had his back turned to the tent. The Bible said his back was to the tent. And Sarah was on the inside of the tent. What's the nature of this angel? Bringing the last message before destruction. He said, Abraham, I'm going to keep my promise to you. I love that. That's our Father God. I'll keep my promise to you. Just about the time of life. According to the time of life. About the next 28 days. I'm going to visit you. And that baby that you waited for these 25 years. You're going to have it. Poor little Sarah. Finally weak in faith. But in them days the circumcision of the man brought the woman in also. For only the circumcision could be recognized before God. And the female could not be circumcised. Therefore the husband was the atonement for her. Because they are one. Abraham's faith helped Sarah at that time. Sarah... Back in the tent, behind the angel, when the angel said, Sarah will have the baby, Sarah in her heart, not out loud, in her heart she laughed. And the angel with his back to the tent, looking Abraham in the face, said, why did Sarah laugh? What kind of a telepathy is that? In the tent. Discerning her thought. Behind him. Don't you see how the scripture makes that plain? That was the last warning message before destruction. 
Open your eyes. Behind him. In the tent. Not out loud. But in her heart. And the angel of the Lord discerned what she did. Why did she laugh? And she was called forth and she was trembling. She said, I didn't laugh. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. That was the angel bringing the last message before fire fell from heaven. Jesus said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so will it be in the days that the Son of Man is revealed from heaven. You see the message? When the Son of Man is revealed from heaven. Now when this angel went to Sodom and began to speak his message to a man, they mocked at him and laughed at him. And they would not receive the message. Neither do they do it today. It's the very same thing. And they won't believe it. There's only one thing left. That's judgment. But notice. The Bible said they'd be like that. In 2 Timothy 3. The Bible said that they will be in the last days. The Spirit speaks expressly. That's directly. Not to that day. But to the last day. Man shall be heady, high-minded, lovers of television, of things of the world. That goes in with it. Lovers of the world more than the lovers of God. Truce breakers and false accusers and the of those which are good. You say that's atheist, Brother Branham. That must be communist. That's American so-called Christians having a form of godliness but denying the power, the supernatural of the gospel from such get away from their walls. Uh-huh. From such turn away. For this is a sort that goes from house to house and with societies and so forth. Leads silly women captive with sin, taken away with divers lust. With all kinds of parties. My church does this and we have so much time. But no time to seek the Holy Ghost and the notion and minds of God. They deny it. No time. But I want you to notice Lot and also notice Noah. Before any rain could ever fall, before one drop of moisture come from the oncoming clouds of judgment, as we read last night, And I believe truly by the gospel, we see the handwriting on the wall. Anybody I believe that was mentally balanced could see that we have just a few hours left. And maybe this is the last one. But before one drop of water of judgment fell, Noah went in the ark. And did not Abraham say to the angel, Would the judge of all the earth make the innocent suffer with the guilty? Certainly not. The judge of all the earth will do righteous. And notice, before there was even one speck of fire that come from the skies, Lot was taken out of Sodom. 
Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and in the days of Lot, so will it be in the coming of the Son of God. And if the handwriting's on the wall, if the time of judgment is at hand, how close is the rapture of the church? How close is it tonight? Think of it. Noah went into the ark for safety. Lot came out of Sodom. One came out, the other went in. What is it the type of? When it's conglomerated together, it's a type of the church coming out of the world for safety and going into the ark of Christ to go to glory. One come out, the other went in. One come out to keep from being destroyed with the world. The other one went into the ark of safety. And Christ is the ark of safety. And remember, before that the judgments of hail, fire, and darkness swept over Egypt, Israel made her way to Goshen where there was light. And Egypt was left to wander in the darkness. Men and women, listen to me now. Before you're left on this earth of misery and canker here in sin, run to the light as hard as you can go. The light Christ Jesus and accept his message of mercy. Hurry, said the angel. And escape thither, for I can't do nothing till thou hast come out. Judgments cannot come. Russia's got the missile that'll put on us on our knees. And so our scientist says that we are five years behind them. It'll be five years before we can catch up to where they are now. Our little Sputnik fizzled about three foot off the ground. Theirs made trip after trip around the world. What is it speaking to us? God saying to his church, come hither. For I can do nothing till thou hast come hither. God waiting for his church to break down their denominational barriers and come together for a real outpouring of the Holy Spirit to lift her to glory. I can do nothing until thou comes thither, waiting for us to come together. Jesus said, when the Son of Man is revealed from heaven. Let me close by saying this. That the Son of Man is now being revealed from heaven. Will it come after a while, Brother Branham? It is now. And I hope I won't have to make this so personal. Of this own meeting. But that your spirit within you that's given you by God can read what I'm talking about. The Son of Man has already come from glory and is revealing Himself for the past few years to His church in mercy, showing them His great presence, doing the same things that He did when He was here on earth, revealing Himself like He did to Abraham before the destruction of He has come now in mercy, revealing himself to the church. It's being laughed at and scoffed at. The next time he reveals himself, it'll be in judgment on the world and the nations that's forgot God and sinned their way 
of grace, their day of grace rather away. It's because they have forgotten God. And they're doing the same thing that they did to the angel of the Lord back there. Mocking and making fun of it. But he's here now in mercy. He will come in judgment upon the nations. And while he is being revealed in mercy, oh, hurry ye hither. Run quickly, children. Get away from these man-made Babylonian theological walls of unbelief and cold formalism. Run away from man-made theology. Get out in the middle of the field in God's grace and there scream for mercy. For it is His blood of His own Son that gives the mercy to us. Get away from this old world of doubt. Get away from your superstitions. Accept God's message of mercy and His message of deliverance and flee to the middle of His grace and there scream, O oh Jesus, Thou Son of God, have mercy on me. For the walls of these man-made doctrines is going to crumble and perish with the unbelieving world. For they that believe not Perish with those who believe not. The world of unbelief perish with those who believe not. But righteous Lot was taken out and so was Noah. Think of it while we pray just a moment. Now men and women, as a servant of the Most High God, And as your brother tonight, I plead with you to come away from every wall that you've been standing by of unbelief, of skeptics. It says, well, maybe it's mind reading. What if Abraham would have thought that? Come away from those old man-made walls and say, I am a Methodist. I am a Catholic. I am a Pentecostal. They're all man-made walls. Can't you feel that tug of the Spirit that calls you away from that to the middle of God's grace? Before the great quake takes place, those little birds, they felt something and they followed it. God's showing you something Follow Him, the Lord Jesus. With your heads bowed, I wonder, sinner friend, if you'd raise your hand to Christ tonight and say, God, be merciful to me. I don't want to stand in this condition at the end time. Would you put up your hand and say, pray for me, Brother Branham. Truly, in the sight of God, I want to die in the condition I'm living in. Are you here? Just raise your hand. God bless you, lady. That takes courage. God bless you, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you over here, sir. God bless you, lady, on this side. You say, Brother Branham, God bless you, my brother. God bless you. You God bless you back there, sir. Oh, blessed be the Lord. He's opening eyes. Aren't you happy he does it? For remember, no man can raise his hand till my father calls for it. And all that he foreknew, he's called. All that he called, he justified. All that he justified, he hath glorified. You could not raise your hand unless there was something in you more stronger than the gravitation of this earth. Gravitation holds your hands down. That's natural. That's scientific. But there's a spirit in you that tells you that you're wrong and you want Christ and you defy those laws and raise your hand to the creator of heavens and earth. While his presence is near, sinner friend that hasn't raised your hand, 15 or 20 has already put their hands up. Will you put your hands up? God bless you, little one. Up in the balcony. 
You think, well, there's somebody sitting by me, Brother Brandon, but oh my, yes, there's somebody sitting by you. It's the angel of the Lord. Are you more afraid of the person that's sitting by you or your social standing? And you are to defy the gospel and walk out after it's been preached and proven? Not asking you to join church. I'm asking you to run for mercy. God's saying, come hither. For I can do nothing till thou hast come hither. Would someone else raise their hand before we pray? God bless you over here, lady. God bless you back there, lady. God bless you, lady. God bless you over there, sir. Just waiting a little while longer. God bless you here, lady. God bless you, sir. God bless you over there, young fella. God bless you, sister, sitting here. God bless this young man here on the front row. Someone else now that hasn't raised your hand, say, be merciful to me, oh God. I now see the handwriting on the wall. Something is sitting here at my seat tugging at me saying, this is your time. You know you profess to be a Christian, but you're not. Oh, I'd be ashamed. Don't be ashamed now. What you going to be when he comes? It's going to be too late. Come now. Would another raise your hand just before closing? Say, be merciful to me, O oh God, my Father. Be merciful. God bless you, young man. I now accept you as my Savior. I want you to take me into glory at that day at the rapture. I want to go for I know it can't be much longer. We're at the end time. Is there backsliders that would raise your hands and say, be merciful to me, God. Let me run right back to the kingdom as quick as I can. I've been around these old walls long enough. I want to come back home, Lord. I'm on my road right now. Would you raise your hand? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's right. He sees every hand. How many of you have just come up and accepted Christ as Savior and has never been born again? Never received the Holy Spirit. Though you've accepted me as your Savior, you'll never go in the rapture unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the scripture. You cannot see the kingdom of God unless you're born again. And you want God to fill you with the new birth. Let's see you raise your hands and say, be merciful to me, God. Send your spirit upon me. That's right. Great multitudes of hands. Now we're going to pray. Quietly and reverently, God. The old-fashioned word of the Lord shall never lose its power. Till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. When that poet wrote the hymn, Father, wonder if he knew just what he was writing. When the last one is brought in, then the word will not be effective anymore. It'll be like casting pearls before swines over the whole earth. But as we see our nation riding under the tide of judgment and we see across the sea out our black arms, yellow and brown, reaching out and crying for mercy, our hearts are stirred within us. And may the people who used to look at this picture the coming Saturday, if you tarry, may they catch the vision. We thank thee, most holy God, for your mercy to these tonight who's raised their hands. Many of them, Lord, who are sinners that put up their hands and said, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Thou hast said in thy word, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not be judged with the wicked, come into the judgment but has passed from death unto life eternal. Thank you for them, Lord. They're yours now. The net has been thrown. The gospel net. I don't know what it caught. It might have caught turtles. It might have caught snakes. It might have caught lizards. But surely it's caught some fish also. Thou knowest the hearts of the people. I want to believe that every one was fish. Use for the master's table now. Grant it, Lord, fill with the Holy Spirit. 
quickly so the church can get ready to go thither. May they escape just now, Lord, from all creeds and denominations to the bosom of the Lord Jesus, the ark of safety, so that the fire that's been revealed from heaven to test those that are upon the earth. Grant it, Lord, and praise shall be thine as we commit them to thee. In Jesus' blessed name, amen. Just keep that music a minute going. Oh, how I love that. You know, I'm not a boy no more. One of these days I'm going to open this Bible its last time. I hope I'm standing at the pulpit when it happens. I love him. I know that he is real. How I love to call my poor, lost, decrepit brother and sister to his mercy and grace. Those old songs just thrill me. They're inspired. When Jesus is on earth, he referred to them. He said, is not it written in the Psalms? That Psalms. O Lamb of God, I come. I come. Let's sing it once. Just as. Will you just raise your hand if you really mean it? One plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and as thou bid me come to Get this on your mind now as we hum this. One of these days we'll be standing and you'll be changed. These mortal, vile bodies will be turned back from an old man to a young. We'll go in the air. To meet him and to be with him and to fellowship together forever. Because I promise I believe, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Oh, won't it be? wonderful on that day aren't you happy today to be a living to see the son of man revealing himself to his church in the day that the son of man is revealed what does he do reveal himself in mercy first then the next time he reveals himself in judgment to condemn those who spurn mercy now it's time. What is he revealing self in mercy? Saving your soul. Giving you of his life. Giving you joy instead of sadness. Faith instead of fear. Healing instead of sickness. Revealing himself to you and his mercy. The very same way he did back there. And if he's doing that now, how far is the rapture away? And judgment. How many understands what I'm talking about? Handwriting. The revealing of the Lord Jesus. Just think, this is the first time it's ever been done since he was on earth. When he revealed himself here on earth to the Jews, how did he do it? Philip went and found Nathaniel under a tree. 
When he come to Jesus, Jesus told him who he was and where he was before he come. And it made a believer out of him. He was revealing himself. Is that right? Destruction followed in the besiege of Jerusalem by Titus in AD 96. Afterwards. What did the Jews say? He's an evil spirit. What did he say? I, in my day, when I'm revealing myself now, I forgive you for that. But in the day that the Holy Ghost reveals like that, one word against it will never be forgiven in this world or the world to come. When he revealed himself to the Samaritans, how did he reveal it? To the woman at the well. And told her what was wrong with her. She said, I perceive that you're a prophet, sir. We know when the Messiah cometh, he'll do those things. He said, I'm he that speaks. And she ran quickly into the city and said, come see a man who told me the things that I've done. Isn't this the Messiah? That's the same God, the same angel, the same spirit that was in that one that revealed himself to Abraham the same way. The same manner, the same message. And Jesus himself said it would be in the coming of the Son of Man. It would be revealed the same way. I don't know nothing else to say. May the Lord reveal himself in mercy to his children is my prayer. Lord Jehovah. Now Lord I've spoke to these people with all my heart. For I realize that I'll have to give an account at that hour when you come of my words. My words will either take me up or it will condemn me. And I have not spoken my words. I have spoken your words. So therefore, Lord, by faith, I look for you to come after me someday in peace. I love my brethren and my sisters. All of the offsprings of Adam of this human race. And I see that this is the end time when the gospel has been preached and rejected. Just as you said. And now in this last hour, you sent the same angel down to do the same things. Man has been taught in their own made theology. And they laugh at it and mock at it. That's the same thing they did in the other days, Lord. May this little company tonight not fail to see that. And even had his picture taken as a scientific proof that even Cain's people will be without any excuse in that day. Grant now, Lord, that he will come in comfort and reveal himself as a son of God from heaven. The same yesterday, today, and forever in the closing of this Gentile age as thou hast been to us in the last few years. Permitting these things to be done for your glory. May it be done again tonight for the gospel's sake that the words of our Lord might be made manifest, which said, the things that I do shall you also, even more of it. For I go to my Father, a little while in the world will see me no more, yet ye shall see me. I will be with you, even in you, to the end of the world. Thank you, Lord. We thank Thee in the name of Thy loving Son, the Lord Jesus. Amen. We're going to call some people to be prayed for. That is, if Billy give out any... Did he give out cards tonight? That, uh, all right. What was it? Bees. All right. Where did we call from last night? Was it at... Uh, oh, that's right. We never had any prayer cards last evening. We just called right from the audience. We can do that again tonight if the Holy Spirit will permit, or I can call a prayer line. I don't want to get too many prayer cards out because Brother Osborne and I will probably have to bring everyone through the line anyhow. So tonight, let's call somewhere from the cards of B. I believe we call from 50 and from 1 and from 85. I think that's about right, the best of my memory. Let's call from 25 tonight. That's a, another new number. If you might wonder why we give out the prayer cards, I'll show you if you're a stranger. How many in here are sick and wants the Lord to heal you? Raise your hands. Anybody in the building? Now, who would be first? 
See, we have to give out the prayer cards in order to get the Holy Spirit to move among us. Then he goes right on out to the meeting and heals the sick. How many is thoroughly convinced that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever? Thoroughly convinced that he promised to reveal himself just the same. He's the same in principle, the same in power, the same in spirit, the same in action. The only thing is just not having a carpal body. So he said, what? I am the vine, ye are the branches. The vine doesn't bear fruit. It purges the branch and it bears fruit. All right. A word keeps coming to me. I might explain. There's somebody in here now that's wondering about the angel, who it was. And I call this angel the Lord. Abraham, ever who's a doubtment or thinking of it, is a scholar. Abraham called the name of that angel that talked to him Lord, which is Elohim, the great almighty Jehovah. He was revealed in a human body. And he was made manifest in the body of his own son, Jesus. And he's made manifest tonight in the body of every believer who will yield himself to him. I'll be with you, in you, to the end of the world. All right. We're not 25. Who has prayer card 25? Raise up your hand. Here's where the word of God must be revealed in truth or it's found in error. For Jesus Christ made the promise. You're aware of that. And just as true as we're in the end time, Christ this year revealing himself, hiding it from the eyes of the educated, wise and prudent, and revealing it to babes such as will learn. Bringing his church that showing his manifestation, revealing himself before judgment is revealed because he always sends an angel of mercy before he sends an angel of destruction. Read the Bible, read the history, and see if that isn't true. How do you do? Is this the person to be prayed for? Here stands a lady, a colored woman. As far as I know, I have never seen that woman in my life. And I'm sure I don't know her. Are we strangers to each other? Are we, madam? If that is, if you just raise up your hand so the people would see that we're strangers. Now, this is a beautiful picture, a portrait of what happened in St. John, the fourth chapter. A woman, a man, two different races. A Samaritan and a Jew then. A white man and a colored woman here. A Samaritan woman and a Jew in the Bible scene. But if Jesus made himself known to the race of the Samaritans, In the way that he did then by telling that woman what was in her heart. And she said, you must be a prophet. But we know that's the sign of the Messiah. And he said, I'm he. If that's the way he was made known yesterday to the Samaritan, he'll have to make it known to the colored race today to be the same. He's revealing himself. If he will, and here's my hands up. I've never seen the woman in my life. Her with her hands up. That she, I know her not, nothing about her, never seen her nor nothing. Then if the Holy Spirit will reveal Jesus Christ in the same power, how many will accept him as Messiah and believe all you people should do it? As people, eternity bound people, the Bible between us, I have never seen the woman in my life as I know of till right now. There it is. Now, what is it? Is it, you say, well, if it's happened, it'll have to be supernatural. We all know that. And that's the way God always reveals himself before the end time in supernatural. Before the Babylonian kingdom was destroyed, before Noah went into the ark, before Moses brought the children out of Israel, before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Always before Jerusalem was destroyed, always it's by the supernatural and promised to do the same thing in this day. Now, you can say like they did in that day, oh, it's Beelzebub, a fortune teller. It's, but if anybody knows what fortune telling is, they know that fortune telling is a lie of the devil and it's not half the time correct. And fortune tellers doesn't preach the gospel. 
and get people saved. Did you ever hear of one? No, and you never will. They're devil-possessed people with a perverted spirit. It's exactly right. The angel of the Lord preaches righteousness and repentance and the coming of the Lord and shows signs. Of course, the devil takes a fortune teller or a soothsayer to impersonate, but an impersonation only declares there's a real one. A bogus dollar only declares there's a real dollar. So, lady, no matter what I would say, one word from God will mean more than I could say in 50 lifetimes. But you be the judge. If you're here for something, I don't know. You know I have no way of knowing what you're here for. But if he does reveal to me, like he did to his, by his son, the Lord Jesus, to the woman at the well, then you will believe that it comes from God? Now, if I said, are you sick? You'd say, yes, sir, I'm sick. I'd say, well, the Lord's going to heal you. You'd have a right to doubt that. He, she, the woman at the well would have had a right to doubt. If he'd told her, well, woman, you're a, you're a Gentile, you're a Samaritan, you, you won't be saved. But he told her where the secret was in her heart. Therefore, she knew that had to come from a spiritual power. And she'd been taught that when Messiah cometh, like Abraham and all them times there, it would be the same thing. And she was spiritual enough, though a prostitute, she was spiritual enough to catch it. Certainly. I don't know who you are or nothing about you, but he does. But if he will reveal it to me, the audience has promised to believe, and so have you. I just wished I had some vocabulary to explain this just now. There's nothing can do it. You know what it feels like? Every person in here is under my control. That's right. The Holy Spirit is here. The anointing. It doesn't make me jump up and scream. That's the blessings of the Lord. A lot of times you Pentecostal people get fooled by that. Jesus had the greatest anointing of any man. And he read a scripture. And just as I have read now. And he said, this day, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. And what did he do? He read the scripture and never run over the place. He sat down and precious words come from his mouth. The greatest anointing that was ever anointed because the scripture had said, I have put my spirit upon him to show judgment, to heal the sick and so forth. He said it. That's the blessings of your salvation that you're enjoying there. The blessings, not the power, the spirit. But now he's here. That woman couldn't hide her life as she had to now. It's right. The lady has a trouble in her side that she once prayed for. That's thus saith the Lord. You also have a skin trouble, a disease that you want me to pray for. That's thus saith the Lord. That is true. Let her be the judge. Did you hear my voice? But that wasn't my voice. I don't know the woman. Whatever he spoke was something, some other person that's using my voice. Do you believe it was the Holy Spirit? Amen. Now you out there are going to believe in you. It's not going to be called up here tonight. You start believing and say, Lord... Reveal to me. Let me touch your garment, Lord. Don't be nervous. Just say, let me touch your garment, Lord. Let him turn around and speak to me. See what happens. If I talk to the woman a little longer, more would be said. Would you like for me to, you colored people like for me to talk to the lady just a little longer? Raise your hands if you will. I don't know that he would, but maybe he will. Would you like for me to speak to you just a little longer? See what the Holy Spirit would say. Now, whatever he said was wrong, I don't know now. Only way I'll ever know is by these recordings that's been taken here. And the recordings is always at the office or back there. You can get them. Now, if the audience still hears my voice, the woman is doing something to her side. It's a trouble in her side. That's right. And then... Right at this time, she's praying for somebody else. 
which is her sister. That's, right. That's, right. That's what you're praying about right now in your heart. That's right. That's right. And your sister is afflicted, sick. And she has arthritis. She has heart trouble and she coughs a lot. It's asthma. 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 Then I see a man appear. It is a man. It's your, bro- it's your brother-in-law. He has arthritis and heart trouble. That's thus saith the Lord. Do you now believe? You believe? It's going to be just as you have believed unto you. The Lord be with you. God bless you, my son. Have you believed? A real reverend. How do you do? As far as I know, young lady, this is the first time that I've ever stood in your presence or you stood in mine. I guess that's so, is it? If it would, would you just raise up your hand? Now, here is a white woman, white man. Now, to you white people, if the Lord Jesus will make himself known, to this girl standing here who I have never seen in my life and she doesn't know me and has never seen me unless it was somewhere in a meeting you was once in a meeting but not on the platform just here all right then we're total strangers to each other now if he makes known what you are here for then you can be the judge of that whether it's so or not you'll know you are aware that something's going on a feeling like you maybe never felt before a real sweet humble feeling the angel of the Lord is that light is standing between you and I and I see the young woman She's holding her heart. She has a heart trouble. And she has some kind of a smothering spells, like she smothers. That's thus saith the Lord. That is right. I see you got a someone else that you've just been talking to. It's a relative that's real happy about something. It's your sister. And she has just been healed of a gland trouble and of a colon trouble. And she was a nervous girl. Then I see another one up here. And that's been some time ago, a sister that was healed. In my meeting, she had cancer and was healed. You're not from this city. You're from Detroit, Michigan, and your name's Irene. Your last name is Dunn, and your sister's name is something like Viola. Go home and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus, and may you have what you have asked. Amen. If thou canst only believe, all things are possible what do you think lady do you believe that these things come from God and his mercy being revealed in the last days little colored lady sitting on the end there Do you believe that God has touched you just now? The piles that you've been having, you believe they are gone? And being that you raised your hand sitting next to her and was just a little surprised because I didn't call you, do you believe me to be God's servant? You do? You're having trouble with your eyes. That's right. That's thus saith the Lord. Well, you can go home and be well. You touched his garment. Amen. Jesus is the same yesterday. What did that person touch? They're 40 feet from me. They never touched me, but they touched the high priest. And he spoke back using human lips. 
You see? You believe that? You do? You're a little afraid to answer me. I'm going to tell you it's not because you're afraid of me, but it's because of your speech you're German. <laughs> that is right. But you have arthritis is what you want me to pray for. Do you believe that the Lord Jesus will bless you and heal you and make you well? You do? You're praying for someone else. That's right. And between you and those people is water. Much water. And the nation that they're in lays beyond France, which is Germany. And what you're praying for is one sister and two brothers. And they are in Germany now. I see them. Your sister is suffering with the heart trouble and gallbladder trouble. She wrote and told you so. One of your brother has trouble in his feet and the other has mental deficiency. That is right. Take the handkerchief that you wipe your tears from and send it to him and don't doubt. And the Lord will make them well. Amen. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. All things are possible. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. You are a stranger to me, I suppose. Now you're praying, just believe. Now it almost upsets me when so many are praying. The Son of God being revealed from heaven is mercy to His church. You're very nervous. You had an operation. That was on the stomach. Part of your stomach was taken out in the operation. You can't eat very much. You believe he'll heal you? You do. You want me to tell you something else. Because you have a burden on your heart. I cannot know your burden, lady. Only as Jesus Christ will reveal it. Do you believe that he will reveal it? Will you give him praise if he will reveal it? It's for someone else. And it's your sister. And your sister is not in this country. She's in a warmer country, south a place called Atlanta, Georgia. And I see something strange about the woman. She's been on a trip, or she's been, a, she's a minister or a missionary. She was in a place where there were yellow people. China. She's from China, a returned missionary, and she's dying now with a cancer on her right breast. The doctor says she can't live. But you take the handkerchief that's in your hand and send it to her. In the name of the Lord, may she live for the glory of God. Thus saith the Lord, may it be so. Go and believe and don't doubt. If you can only believe, all things are possible. We are strangers to each other, I suppose. If the Lord Jesus will reveal to me 
the secret of your heart or let me know something that's been in the past of your life? Could you believe as stranger to you that I have preached from the word, the truth? Wonder if the audience would accept that too. Say, if the Lord will reveal to this woman the very thing that's in her heart, I will not doubt any longer, but I will believe. If you won't weary, sir, sitting there at the end of the row, if you believe with all your heart, God will heal you of that heart trouble that you're so concerned about. Your faith did that, the little lady next to him there. Believe now and live. I challenge your faith to believe that I preach the truth out of God's Word. What did the angel say? If you get the people to believe you and then be sincere when you pray, nothing shall stand before the prayer. There's a little lady sitting right back here to my right. She's bouncing a little baby on her lap. She's just raised her eyes from having her head bowed in praying in reverence because she's praying for her baby. That is true, lady. If the Lord God will reveal to me the trouble of that baby, will you accept what you ask for? You're asking for healing. I have no power to heal. I am only a minister of the gospel, but your little baby's got a breaking out on its head. That is true. Now, if you will believe with all your heart, you shall receive what you ask for. And the little lady behind you, that's very nervous. She's expecting to be mother most any time. She's weeping because her heart was struck about the little baby and she's fixing to give birth to one right away. And she's nervous, but don't fear, sister. God walks through the valley of the shadows of death. He will deliver you. What you wiping your eyes for, sir? Why not just have faith in God and you'll be healed of that stomach trouble and he'll make you well. Do you believe you're healed now? All right, then go eat your supper. Amen. Don't you believe on the Lord Jesus? You on the end down there with the heart trouble, do you believe that God will make you well? If thou canst believe. It surprised you, didn't it? Stand up to your feet. All right, forget about the heart trouble if you believe on the Lord Jesus. His mercy and grace has touched you. It's the Son of God revealed from heaven. Go believe. You're very happy, sir. you got joy in your heart because you've been praying. If the Lord will reveal to me what you're praying about, will you believe it'll happen? It's for your wife. She's had two strokes. She's got a broken hip. You believe, and God will take care of that for you. Amen. You believe. had an operation and it's made you awful weak you're anemic the tumor made you very weak 
and you're praying for somebody else, a sister. She has high blood pressure. I see him put the thing from her arm. That's right. Brother Strong, man, doctor. She's also got heart trouble. He's listening like that and beating on her back, first place, the other. Do you believe? She calls you Sally. That's your name. Olander. You live on a street called Montclair. And your address is 5526. Now, if you believe with all your heart, then take the handkerchief to her and go in peace. God be with you and grant to you the desire of your heart. Have faith in God. It must be time for me to leave the boys pushing me. Will you believe right now with all your heart? Stand up to your feet then just a moment. I'm going to ask you to do something. Just a minute. That may seem strange. Do you believe the Son of God is being revealed from heaven? Then lay your hands on each other. Just put your hands over on one another. The Bible said this. They shall lay their hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall lay their hands on the sick. Now you pray as I pray. You believe as I believe. And the God of heaven who is present will make you well. And you who gave your lives to Christ, go to a good church right quick and be baptized. Calling on the name of the Lord. Dear God of heaven, have mercy tonight. We are tired and weak. But I pray, eternal blessed God, that just at this moment that you'll send your spirit and such a blast that it'll shake the sin shackles of unbelief away from this audience. And may they be filled just now with faith and power that they may be healed. Satan, your days are numbered. Your kingdom has been numbered. You're weighed in the balance and found wanting. Come out of this audience and away from this people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now raise your hands and give Him praise, all ye that believe.